seat that might be kneeling and cross-legged, whatever you like, and just gonna take these first few moments always. Oh, actually as well, sorry, before we, you just, you'll need, you might need a block this morning or a book or something that just helps the floor uh, lift up to you. I mean, some of you may not need this, but I always like to have it handy. Um, so yeah, if you have, if you can grab a block and then sit yourself down somewhere comfortable and just settle in to your breath and just letting the breath flow in and out through the nostrils. So we are in our final week of January and we've been focusing on practices to embrace and embody your inner warrior. Uh, so we're going to build on last week's session, which was the opportunity for you to cultivate patience so that you could really soak in a bath of appreciation for all your warrior efforts, which have gotten you here in this moment, because sometimes we need reminding of what we hold inside us, these internal reserves, which we are continuously drawing upon, because really deep inside you, is more strength than you will ever know. You've been bending so you don't break, surfing this giant wave of uncertainty, navigating a landscape of grief, and creating new ways of being. So let that settle in for a moment and just settle into your profound resilience. inside of you is a reservoir of everything you need to support you. Everything you need is already inside of you. Maybe you just need reminding. This reserve which you draw upon, it's always there, even when you forget about it. So this morning's class, just gonna let it be a reminder of what you have in your reservoir. And we're going to begin with a breathing practice, a pranayama, and this morning we're doing Anulom Balom. So this is very similar to Nadi Shodhana, our alternative nostril breathing, except instead of holding the breath, we just let the breath flow. So there's no retention, but we still take a hand mudra to manipulate the nostrils. So we're going to choose either first, second finger between the eyebrows, and you can use your thumb and your ring finger to open and close your nostrils, or you could fold those same two fingers in, and then you have your thumb and your ring finger as the opener and closers. So using the right hand, just choose that mudra and take your right thumb and just place it over your right nostril and then let the breath come in the left nostril and whenever that breath comes to its completion just close your left nostril and just release your right nostril and breathe out the right side and then when that exhale finishes you're going to breathe straight back in that same nostril and then again when the inhale finishes Close the right side, open the left side, let the breath come out the left. And then we just keep going in through the left, out through the right, in through the right, out through the left, without any retention. Do just a couple more rounds of this breath. Trying to keep the shoulders relaxed, still sitting up tall. The 
the next time you're breathing that exhale out of your left side, just going to release the hands and just return to breathing naturally. <clears throat> just keeping the eyes closed, just sitting with the breath for a moment. Your breath is your constant companion, just like your internal reserves, this reservoir of everything you need, knowing that they're there, even when you forget about them. So now start to imagine to see in your mind the bluest of blue skies. It's vast and free, boundless, extending and stretching out beyond even your own imagination. And now just start to see some clouds coming in. Maybe they're light, fluffy, white ones. Maybe they're a little darker, or you can see a storm coming, building on the horizon. Perhaps the blue sky disappears entirely, and there's a thick, gray, low cloud settling in, which we're very familiar with, the British specialty, this low cloud. But this sky you're seeing, it's just like your mind. At times, it's light, at other times, dark, heavy, but think of your mind as that blue sky and encourage that brightness and lightness in your mind. Even when those thick clouds come in, there's always blue sky behind it. A deep reserve you can push through the clouds to find. We can see this when we're on an airplane, we might be moving up through that cloud, sometimes just a moment, sometimes it takes minutes but on the other side is that blue sky. Sometimes we just need to remind ourselves it's there. You need to remind yourself that you have these internal resources which you can draw upon, blue sky in you always. These resources that encourage you to be free, that are there to support you to be bright, buoyant, even when you're not feeling it, even when those dark clouds come in, you've got blue sky reservoir. These reserves you have for your mind, your nervous system, you just need to remind yourself that they're there. So keep this blue sky in your mind, the balance, the vastness, the freedom. So just going to start to allow your eyes to open and bring yourself onto your hands and knees. So we're going to line up the wrists, <clears throat> excuse me, under the shoulders and the knees under your hips. And we're just going to come into a cat cow, but we're going to try not to fall into like default move, but try to do it really mindful and starting with the tail. So just start to tilt the tail under as you pull the low belly up and just Curl yourself into that cat curl where we look back to the legs and we might even let the head sort of uh, roll around a little bit here. Maybe even moving around in the body, but just making your easing your way into that cat. And then from the tail, we're going to start to pull into that cow. So start with your tailbone tipping up towards the ceiling as you start to reach your tummy to the mat, pulling the heart through and up and lifting the head only as comfortable. And then when it's time to go back into cat again from your tail, just feel like maybe somebody could walk their fingertips up your spine as you curl into cat again. And then from the tail, back into your little extension in cow pose. So one more time from the tail, pull it in, coming into cat. We're gonna hold it here. Pull the low belly up, press the hands into the mat, press the feet, and just float your knees. Just hover your knees. They're barely coming up, but we're pulling up from the tummy. 
and then bring your knees down and bring it into that little back bend of cow pose. So we're gonna come now back into cat if you need to. If you need to curl the spine to pull the belly deep or see if you could find just a neutral spine and do that exact same exercise. If you feel you can't lift up without that curl into cat, that's fine. But just explore it. If you could find neutral spine, draw the belly up and float those knees. So you'll feel it a little deeper in your abdominals, trying to not let it drop into your lower back. And if you feel your lower back, start to curl into cat. And then float the knees. This time, press back, child pose. And then one more time, onto the hands and knees, either in that cat curl or into your neutral spine. Push the ground away, pull the belly up, hover the knees. And see what comes up for you when we do these more challenging and strength building. Can you still find that blue sky, even though no one likes ab work? <laughs> and then float the knees, sit to the heels. Stretch out into child pose again. From child pose, let's make our way into down dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up, press back. First down dog, just give yourself time always to let the legs wake up to the posture. So moving the legs if you need to or just shaking the hips around, whatever you need. And then we're just gonna make our way forward. So stepping up to the front of your mat, let yourself drape to the legs, bend your knees as much as you need to. And then push the ground away and we're gonna rise up to stand. Palms are gonna find each other, exhale, come back to the heart. Let's do our sun salutation A, but we're gonna put a little different um, spin into it. So reach your arms up, get nice and tall. As you exhale, we're gonna dive down to the legs. When you inhale, just lengthen out the spine, straighten up the legs, reach the heart forward. Then fold again, press your palms into the mat, step back to plank. Just pause here and plank for a breath. Pull back through the heels, keep the shoulders spread across the back, belly lifts up. And then we can float the knees if you need to, bend the elbows back, come to the tummy. When you get to your tummy, we're just going to stretch the arms out in front. We've been doing this the last few weeks but we can really engage the legs. So palms, tops of feet, really pushing in, scoop the belly back, engaging everything. And then let's keep the right hand and leg where they are, but bend your left knee and let your left hand reach around to that left foot. We're not gonna come into super back bend here. We're just gonna stretch through the thigh. And if you want to, you could flip over onto your right side there and just get a little deeper stretch through the front of the body. And then you can flip it back to your tummy, straighten the leg, reach the left arm. Now the left leg, left arm anchoring you and you can bend that right knee, find the right hand to the right foot. Everything's still engaged, just like it was when we were laying flat out, and then you can roll over to your left side. If you have the space, I'm gonna fall into my bowl there, make it clatter. And then flip it back. When you come back this time, hands under the shoulders, lengthen through the tail, let's just curl up into Cobra. And then tuck the toes, press back, downward facing dog. When you breathe in, lift your left leg, reach it up to the ceiling. And then as you breathe out, step it forward so that you come into a runner's lunge. 
Now you might take your block and place your right hand on your block, whatever height you like. Obviously the taller it is, the easier it'll be. <laughs> Excuse me, we're gonna keep that right hand on the block and just gonna rotate to the left and reach your left arm, left fingertips up to that blue sky. When you take your exhale, start to straighten your front leg and see if you could feed your left arm under your right arm and reach back to your right leg. Doesn't have to touch. And then bend the knee, open back up. So we're gonna do this a few more times. So with your own breath, one breath, straighten the front leg, left arm reaching under the right arm. See if you could grab that right leg and then rotate. Open up. Exhale, straighten. We're sort of thread the needle. So we thread that left arm under right arm, reach into the back of the mat, bend the knee, and open up. When you exhale, let's bring the hand down, step back, downward facing dog. Have a breath here. I'm going to do the other side now. So we can inhale, right leg reaches up, exhale, step it forward. We're into that runner's lunge, left hand on your block, <coughs> excuse me. And then we rotate to the right. We reach the fingertips up towards that blue sky. And then when you take your next breath, see if you could straighten your right leg, feed it under, right arm under left arm towards that back leg. And then bend the knee. Open up, keep going, just moving with your breath between this rotation and a forward bend. The front leg doesn't have to go totally straight, just see what it's capable of. Last one, when you open back up towards that blue sky, bring your right hand down. Step back to down dog, or if you want to, you can have a vinyasa on your way. If you feel like you're full of energy this morning, you could ripple forward to plank, lower down, take your back bend, and end in down dog. And then we're going to go back to that left side. So inhale, left leg up, step it through on the exhale, right hand on your block. Let's open back up again towards that blue sky. And then straighten that front leg, feed that left arm under your right arm, reach it back to your right leg, and then take it up. Let's just do one more on this side. Straightening up, reaching under the arm towards the back leg, bend the knee, coming up. So from here, we're gonna bring the left hand down and then reach both the arms up towards the ceiling. And then spin both your feet towards the long edge of your mat. <clears throat> turn your heels in, turn your toes out. Let's sink down into our goddess squat. So keep the tailbone nice and long. We're just gonna side bend towards the front of your mat. Take that back arm up and over, reach towards the front and then circle through the center. So we bring that same forearm to the back leg. And now the front arm comes up and over to face the back of the mat. And then circle it through the center. When it touches down that front thigh, reach the back arm up again. Circle it through the center. And then one more time, front arm reaching to the back. Circle it through the center. And then let's just stand up. Turn the back toes to face the long edge, your front toes back to the front of your mat. Bend that front knee and let's side bend towards the front in side angle pose. So it's really similar to what we just did, except our feet have changed. And we're not collapsing all the weight on that front thigh. So holding strong through the legs, And when you exhale next, bring your hands down to frame your front foot. Same option, straight into down dog, or you might, 
enjoy that sequence of vinyasa on your way to down dog. Moving over to the right side, right leg reaching up on that inhale, exhale, slow step through, back into our little runner's lunge, left hand on your block or mat, and we're going to reach right fingertips up to the ceiling, and then one breath straight in the front leg, reach that arm back under the left arm, and then bend the knee, open up, one more on this side, straighten up reaching under the front arm to the back leg and then reaching back up to that blue sky. Now we're going to bring right hand down to meet up with the left hand and press the ground away to come up standing lunge. Now spin both your feet to the long edge of your mat, turn your heels in, toes out. Let's bend down. We're going to go to the back. So side bending towards that back thigh. We reach the front arm all the way up and over. Circle round through the center. When we circle, we should really feel a nice opening in the upper back. And then the back arm reaches up to the front. Circle through the center. Try not to put all the weight of the body on those thighs. We just gently resting the arm, holding yourself up from the center. Just going from side to side. Do the last one with this front arm, reaching to the back, circle through the center, standing up, turning your feet parallel, and then just sinking down into forward bend. Bring your hands to your hips. Push the ground away, sort of zipper up through those inner thighs to press yourself up. And we're going to turn the front toes back to the front of the mat. Bend that front knee, side angle. And then when you take your exhale, bring your hands down to frame your front foot. So same options. Vinyasa, if you want it, step back to down dog if you don't. After a few breaths in downward facing dog, we're just going to start to walk our hands back towards the feet. So really pull up from your low belly as you come back to just drape down to the legs at the back of the mat. And then I'm gonna to start to bend the knees to come into our lowest squat of Malasana pose. And when you get down here, just gonna sit down, stretch the legs out on your mat. So we're going to come to Purvottanasana. This is like a reverse plank pose. We don't really do, it, do this posture that much, but really good for opening the front of the body. But for some people, this might be a stormy cloud kind of posture. So just to see what comes up for you. See if you can push past those clouds to your blue sky. So I'll show you what I mean by this. We're going to do the modified version this morning with knees bent and we lift up and we look to the tummy. So don't let your head throw back. We're gonna do it twice. So bring your feet to the mat and your knees bent and your arms behind you, sort of just by your hips, so your fingertips facing forward. Draw your shoulders together first, pull up from that low belly, use the legs to press up. Try to get those hips in line with your knees, looking towards the front of your mat, breathing. Keep drawing the shoulders together. And then we're going to lower the hips down, cross your left leg in front of your right leg, and come forward. And then going to set up again, 
to do it one last time. Mm -hmm. So knees are bent, feet on the mat, hands behind the hips, fingers face forward, pull those shoulders together, lift the hips, keep pushing down through the feet, maybe even try to wrap those outer thighs around, get your butt working, keep breathing. And then let's lower the hips, cross right in front of left for your legs this time, and then folding forward. Bringing yourself up. Just gonna take your right hand over to your left leg, Sit up nice and tall and twisting round to the left. And then coming back to center, bring your left hand over to that right leg. Sit up nice and tall, little twist off to the right. And then come back to center. Gonna stretch your legs out, just bend your knees and bring yourself down to your back. Walk your heels in towards your sit bones. Bring your arms down by the side of the body. It's just do set two bendasana, the bridge pose. So neck stays nice and long. We really want those heels lining up with sit bones, ankles under the knees. Start to from initiate from your tail, just like cat cow. We start to lengthen the tail, lift the hips, peel the spine up off the mat. Keep those shoulders spread onto the mat. Nice slow deep breaths. And then lay the spine back down from the top to the bottom. Just let your feet separate a little wider now. Keep your knees bent. You could take your arms a little wider and just let your knees swish from side to side like windshield wipers on your car. Starting on the right. If you started on the right, you'll finish on the left. If you started left, take that last one to the right. And then when you're ready, just going to bring your knees back to center, slide your legs away, turn your palms up and rest. Reconnect to your breath, to your heartbeat, to these things that are always with you, always supporting you. Sometimes you just need a little reminding to reconnect to them. Same with your mind. At times you need reminding that behind any negative feelings, there's always that blue sky that is clear and vast, bright, boundless, and free. You are the sky. Everything else is just the weather. You are the sky. Everything else is just the weather.
So if you're ready to come back, deeper breaths. Let the movements you begin with be nice and gentle, wiggling fingers, toes in time. When you feel able, just bringing yourself over to lie on the right side of the body. And then eventually coming up to sit. So I thank you all. Namaste.